speaking of minorities, there's one more disturbing news story, and obviously I spoke about this um, in, on my. You can you can check check it out in my playlist. Minorities in Pakistan. How recently Christian nurses have come under attack by these Islamic extremists. Um, a, a popular theory is, as it was evident in one of those attacks, that Christian nurses hold a lot of positions in Pakistani government hospitals. So a lot of nurses are actually uh, Christian. And the one incident that took place in Lahore a few weeks ago, probably three weeks ago, that one, I showed you the video. Let me, let me find that video again. So these guys are angry because uh, this Christian nurse was accused by this mob of blasphemy and these guys were demanding that they that they must be uh, expelled and uh, they should hire Muslim nurses. Now these are some of those Christian nurses uh, who were calling out, who were um, calling for help. They were um, asking the Chief Justice of Pakistan and uh, Prime Minister, Chief Minister of Pakistan to help them out. Um, and this wasn't fair. They were not guilty of blasphemy. Um, but later on, this mob barged into this church that was in that hospital. And then they started sucking up to singing songs, sucking up to Muhammad called Nasheeds. So that's just one, that was the latest incident that took place in Lahore. So now, as I said, and previously, if you guys remember a month uh, earlier, uh, I think it was in March or probably in April, um, there was another Christian nurse. She was accused of blasphemy after she was told to go clean out a cupboard. And apparently it had some um, something written in Arabic, which she just casually threw it out. And then she was stabbed by one of the guys who worked there. And then she was later arrested. We don't know what happened to her. So lately, there's been attack on a lot of attacks in the last three months, at least against four, four nurses um, in Pakistan, in Punjab. Now, this is Punjab, not Sindh. Um, and just last week, I shared the news story of uh, this Christian nurse. She was asked if she was a Christian when she confirmed she was a Christian, then unfortunately she was gang raped by three men. Uh, this was just one of the guys caught in the uh, CCTV footage that you can see is 15th of May 2021. So, so these are three or four attacks against these Christian nurses in the last three months. And now there's another one. Uh, this time, these people barged into a house of a Christian nurse. Her name was Shiza Masih. She was 13 years old and she was gang raped by three men, Muhammad Ali, Kari Hussein and Muhammad Rizwan, Ramzan. Sorry. Ram, Ramzan stood outside uh, to, uh, to keep a watch and while the two men, Muhammad Ali and Kari Hussein, went in and they brutally raped that young girl who was alone at the time while her parents were, um, were away. To the hospital doing their doing doing their doing the job. Um, later on, another video surfaced where, when parents came back home, they took the they took the daughter to the hospital, the very hospital where parents worked. They were refusing to do the medical on the girl. Um, apparently, the counter argument that they've given is that they cannot. Uh, do the swab test and all of that, um, what they call, I believe they call a rape kit or something. They can't use that unless they've been given a green light by the police. That is some, it's, it, it's a criminal matter, therefore you're authorized to do it. Um, so the doctors were saying they were not, um, they, they haven't been given this green light by the police. So that was the last I checked. There was a video um, going viral online. Um, so that is the condition of Christian's 
in Christian nurses in Pakistan for some reason. This and this is why it's important that we need to keep talking about it. And our prime minister and the one of the world's most useful, useless, worse than useless ministries in Pakistan called the Human Rights uh, Ministry. And the lady on the left is that uh, is the minister of that ministry. Um, and uh, she just seems like uh, she's just she's just asleep. She doesn't want to wake up. This is an actual footage. She was caught sleeping at a desk. And that's what Pakistani human rights um, minister looks like working hard for the human rights in Pakistan. And it's important that we keep talking about this. I Those of you who can help me out, uh, you, there's a whole playlist of these of these uh, victims in my playlist called Minorities in Pakistan, please go and check that playlist out. And whatever you have, if you can send these emails to European Union, to uh, to, to German um, uh, human rights organizations, French human rights organizations, put fr- French and German subtitles on, please send them, send it to them. Last month, there was only one case that they discussed in the European Parliament, and then they discussed that they're going to put pressure on Pakistan, and that just caused chaos in the Pakistani government circles, and uh, they were they were not happy about it. Now that was just one case of a Christian couple that was accused of blasphemy back in 2014, and they've been on a death row since then. And they didn't even blaspheme; they were just casually husband and wife were talking about it. And apparently, they uh, they spoke ill of the you know the greatest mercy on the planet. Um, so that's just one case that brought so much, that caused so much panic in the Pakistani government. And I've literally got 60, 70 cases in my playlist. Um, p- please check them out, send emails, put them up, put, take out the best bits from it and put them out on Twitter and make it go viral. What we've seen from the other case of Sunita Masih, that people have heart, even Pakistanis, were tweeting about it. It's, it's such a shame that that story is probably going to be a fake. Um, but this is not fake. This is real. This girl is real. This girl has been gang raped for just being a daughter of a Christian nurse. That was her crime. And the other crime was she was born in Pakistan. So please, guys, help it out. It's sad that one news story that actually got picked up by mainstream Pakistani big time celebrities and it looks like that turned out to be fake news but that doesn't mean every other news story is fake news so what that means what that tells me that we need to keep working on it we need to keep talking about it because sooner or later the larger saner Pakistani public is going to wake up to it and they're not going to just um, you know uh, put fingers in their ears and cover their cover their eyes and just look the other way so speaking of which, there was um, this is a confirmed uh, news. This girl, Pool, Pooli Megava, she's a daughter of uh, Manu Megava. She was abducted from this place, Tandu Muhammad Khan, a few days. And yesterday, she was married to Ali Raza. Typical case, she's under um, 18 years of age. Um, she was originally abducted. But what happens later on, they usually say, whoever abducts them, they usually say, well, she they eloped. And she has willingly renounced her religion and converted to Islam to be with her boyfriend or now husband. That is the official narrative that they usually always give. Now, our problem is, even let's just say she was seduced and she wanted to marry this guy who happened, always happens to be a Muslim, um, then she's under 18. Under Pakistani law, you actually can't get married under 18. And under Pakistani law, a Muslim girl can't marry a non-Muslim. So why are non-Muslim girls under 18 are allowed to marry uh, Muslim men? Um, th- that That is our point of contention there. Um, so this will probably surface again. And even, look, as I said, it's possible that she might have fallen for the guy. But again, she's under 18. Um, so that shouldn't be allowed. But, you know, that keeps on happening. I'm also thinking about um, uh, my... S- there, there are a couple of sources that I have who keep a tab of these things. Uh, uh, but when they're not very resourceful. So they can't 
actually go to the village where the incident takes place and they can't really film it and sometimes you know when you need hardcore evidence and you need to be able to interview the victims we don't have that um i i actually just thought about it when i, when I was talking that maybe i might have to hire them I'm, i might have to pay them uh, so if you guys can be my uh, be a pat- be my patron i would create a separate um category in my in my patreon which would say if you want to support um my reporters on the ground then be my be my uh, patron from that um, angle but you don't have to you know subscribe to it but there are different levels of that so if you could do that i haven't created that yet on my patreon so just bear with me by the end of the stream i would create one um so yeah if you guys can fund us in securing boots on the ground that 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 can actually go to the actual uh place where the incident allegedly takes place we could investigate it a bit more and obviously those guys would not be able to uh reveal the identity so um we you know we, we're going to have to do it uh very carefully to help me produce more videos like these support me on patreon or paypal